Welcome to my speech, which will be about DevOps mindset in the hyper-casual universe. And this is Ozan, co-founder of Longhorn Games. And yeah. So yeah, first of all, a little bit of introduction about Longhorn Games. Uh, we were founded in October 2020, so it's been a little bit over two years. And we are producing hyper-casual and arcade idol games for the most part. And we are Istanbul-based. We are in uh, Taksim. Um, yeah, so I think we develop over hundreds of hyper-casual and some arcade idol games so far. And we are a team of 17. So that's what we do. Um, we have two launches. And one soft launch, one of them is the Crowd Evolution, which received more than 15 million of downloads uh, and became a mega hit. And the other one is Dream Restaurant, which was our first arcade idol hit with more than 20 million downloads. And at one soft launch, never a runner. Um, yeah, those are our achievements so far. Yeah, so normally I wouldn't talk about myself, I would just skip that. But in that topic, I thought that it would be good to talk about myself a little bit because I want to tell you why do I feel entitled to talk about DevOps in hyper-casual games. I'm an entrepreneur and a software engineer. I've been developing games since 2005, basically since high school. And I've worked in several startups in different parts of the world in different roles, including full-stack development, DevOps, and team management, etc. And I've failed multiple startups for co-founding long-run games. And I have an expertise in DevOps, which is why I chose that topic. Yeah, so that was my set in the hyper-casual universe. So that means there is something different in the hyper-casual uh, when we apply DevOps, right? So first of all, what is DevOps? That's what we, are be, what we are going to be talking about. And then I will talk about different development methodologies. What is a DevOps cycle? How is DevOps is different in hyper-casual genre? And how can we utilize DevOps techniques and mentality for our hyper-casual projects? Yeah, so what is DevOps? Um, that's actually a contrary topic because you can find a lot of different definitions for DevOps. I think there are multiple answers. So DevOps is a mindset because it's kind of a philosophy that you can apply to different uh, projects, different scopes. And it's also a tool set because it requires some tooling when you want to apply DevOps strategies to your projects. But first, let's discuss the uh, dev part, because DevOps means the de uh, development coming together with the operations. In order to uh, complete the definition, we first need to start from the DevOps part, I think. And there are two main uh, development methodologies that we have uh, applied to our project so far. The first one is the waterfall methodology, which is uh, kind of the traditional way and the Agile methodology, which has been popular since around 10 years, I think. Yeah, so let's talk in detail about what is the waterfall development methodology. So waterfall is the just the traditional way, we can say. So you just start from some idea, some planning. You do some development, some testing, deploy your project, whatever you are going to deploy. And then you do some operations. Uh, in order to keep it running. And then you just need to go back to the, one of the previous stages if you need to. For example, you tested something, you saw something wrong, you need to go back to coding and fix it and deploy it again. So it's mostly the manual process of developing a project, which is just sequential. And each stage is distinctive, and the previous stage needs to be finished in order to start working on the next stage, right? So you need to first code in order to test it. Um, and most of the time, the testing falls behind. And that is because 
the testing is kind of hard, right? You need to deploy, you need to test. So there is no automation in place. So that's the traditional, and I, and I believe most of the hyper casual gaming studios are just choosing that way. Because it's simple, it's fast to apply, you don't really need any tooling or any investment, you just do it, basically. And then here we have the agile development model, which started to be popular since, I think, 2010. And rather than being a sequential workflow, this is an iterative workflow. So you can see here that we can start from the plan, design, we develop, we test, we deploy, we do some reviewing to see what is wrong. And then if there are some stuff wrong, then we can go back into the cycle until we are satisfied with the result, and then we can launch our project. So this is not sequential, but also this is an iterative approach, right? So there's something different here. That means we don't need to go back to the previous stage. We just keep the cycle going, and we can iterate our products uh, continually. So for that reason, we can plan the product in sprints, usually in weeks. And that means we have a better plan. Rather than a sequential plan, we can have uh, our tasks uh, weekly planned, and then we can follow them uh, according to the plan. So testing and development is part of the development cycle. So you de deploy and you test, and there's this continual cycle. And also CI CD is just the key to Agile, which means continuous integration and continuous delivery, uh, which is, again, I think, is something we lack in the gaming industry. Because most of the companies are not really familiar with these terms, and they don't have the expertise at their disposal, which makes it hard to apply these kind of techniques. Yeah, so we talked about different development methodologies that then we can ask again what is DevOps, right? So DevOps is a mindset, it's a philosophy, and it brings development and operations together, and it allows teams to collaborate more efficiently because now there is this cycle, it just goes on and goes on, and that means teams are kind of free, uh, that free of deploying and testing and deploying again, so it just happens uh, automatically, right? So that's the that was my set. But it's also a tool set because now you need CI CD, continuous integration and delivery, and you need some tools for that because it, it ain't gonna happen by itself, right? So you need to have some maybe servers, uh, some pipelines, etc. You need to have some automation in place. And Agile sets out to deliver great value by continuous feedback. And DevOps also does something diff uh, similar, but it also involves operations. So they work in combination. They are not really opposite to each other, but they are meant to be working together. So that means, yeah, DevOps, again, what it is, it is a combination of multiple paradigms, like it's a philosophy, it's a practice, and it's a tool set. And rather than an alternative to Agile, as I mentioned, it can be seen as an extension. And this kind of mindset helps us with project management, testing, and continuous uh, QA. So as you can see here, so we start with the mindset, and uh, we just continually uh, develop our, and improve our product. Yeah. So that's my definition of DevOps. You can find some different definitions as well. Every company has their own definition, by the way. So I don't think there's a single answer to this. But we can talk about what is DevOps in the hyper-casual universe. Because from my experience, having all this experience working in different startups and deploying tons of servers and databases, etc., I found that in hyper-casual genre and industry, DevOps is actually kind of simpler because the projects are simple. So it's not a huge project most of the time. It's simple to build, and you don't have to deploy your games to running servers. You just deploy it to an app store. And then the testing doesn't have to be automated because you just do manual testing. 
most of the hyper-casual games, they don't require automated testing. But it's also challenging. There are different challenges in the hyper-casual genre rather than a simple software project because you need to now define a new hyper-casual pipeline for each new project. And if you know anything about hyper-casual games, you have to try a lot of hyper-casual games. That means you need to define a lot of different pipelines for each game. So there is this abundance of pipelines that you need to take care of. So that means you need to be able to uh, configure them in a fast way. And yeah, and for a large studio, you have to have a system that can build games in concurrent way, right? So let's say you are producing 50 games a month. That means you have to build all of them at the same time, otherwise it would be too slow. And yeah, there's the, uh, the last element is that the hyper-casual developers are not really familiar with DevOps for the most part. So those are the challenges that we face as hyper-casual game studios. Yeah, um, so knowing these uh, challenges and benefits, how can we utilize the DevOps for our hyper-casual projects? Well, it all starts with the idea, and then we do the project planning using the agile method that I mentioned. So we plan our uh, projects on a weekly basis, so we, most of the time we split them into phases, or phase one, phase two, phase three, and we expect them to be delivered at on time. And then the DevOps part comes in, which starts with the development of the project. And the, after development is at some point, we start the automated builds. And these builds are being uploaded to stores automatically. And then we do the manual testing. And then if we see something wrong, then we go back to fixing the bugs. But now the, there's a cycle. So most of this is automated and takes out the burden from our shoulders and some servers that are working for us now helping us. Yeah, so let's start with the project planning uh, part. As I mentioned, in long run games, we most of the part split a project into multiple phases. The phase one is the MVP. It means minimum viable product, which is the minimum, uh, minimal version of a playable test uh, version of the game. So we mostly test the mechanics on that phase, and we expect it to be delivered in a week or less. And then if we are satisfied, the phase two is the polishing the game and making the art look beautiful. And the phase three is, uh, of course, the ad integration and just making it profitable. And once we have these phases, we can easily uh, plan our development, our art uh, development, and everything, basically, that our team needs to do. And we have a strict deadline now. But not a single deadline, multiple deadlines. So if we miss one of the deadlines, we can always make it up in the next one. Um, yeah, so we need to focus on both on being on time, but also the quantity of deliveries, because we have to de deliver multiple versions of the project, right? This is how it's different from the waterfall methodology. There must be a continual delivery cycle. And we have to use some tooling, uh, tooling for project planning and management, because now we have a complex uh, plan on a weekly basis, and we have to keep track of our projects, and we are using currently ClickUp for that. There are other alternatives like uh, Trello, Asana, et cetera. Uh, I, th I think those are a must. Well, yeah, once we have the project planned in phases, uh, on a weekly basis, now we can start working on development. And the first thing is, we, first thing we need is that is, we need a version control system, and ideally that is Git. There are other alternatives like Perforce, uh, although it's a little bit harder to use and it's also expensive. Uh, Git also has, has its own drawbacks, but it's working for us pretty well. And using a version control system, lets you to automate your builds. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to uh, automate your builds and deployments. Because now every commit to the main branch will trigger a new deployment on our automated servers so that the developer doesn't have to de build and deploy anything at all. It just happens. And also, the packages are also a key part of the DevOps mentality because now you 
uh, you gain a lot of time by just using the uh, already existing packages. And also, we need to invest in tooling a lot because DevOps, as I mentioned, is also a tool set. We need to have an ex uh, extensive tool set in order to achieve what we want. And that includes some templates, uh, I don't know, some, maybe some mechanic packets, etc. You can whatever you can think of. Yeah, and I, this, I think this is the most crucial part of DevOps mindset is build automation because I'm not sure how many of the gaming studios are manually building their projects, but if you are doing that, you just need to stop. And you just need to start automating your builds. Nobody in your team should be building manually. It all has to happen automatically because it just saves you an enormous amount of time. And also motivation and, and, and yeah, it's basically uh, a must for DevOps. So there are some options like Unity Cloud Build, which is kind of easy to use. Uh, you can start with that. If you need some more customized solution, you can go with your own uh, build servers or even GitLab CI CD pipelines. Uh, maybe you can use Fastlane on your custom build servers. There are a lot of alternatives, but you need to start with one. And the, I, the, the one I would recommend would be Unity Cloud Build because it's the easiest. So how it works is, it just fetches your project and it just builds the project on their servers. And then you need to set up some custom scripts for the ser uh, servers to upload the build to the app stores. And this lets the project be built continually. And that means the project will be built and published to the app store so now everyone can test it. So that means on every push, we have a testable version of our project. And we just test it all the time. Like Basically, we are receiving 10 different versions of our projects on a daily basis. So that means if there is something was broken in a version, we can just go back to the previous one. So we just don't lose time on the bugs anymore. Right, so this is really key, the key feature of DevOps mentality. Yeah, and the continuous delivery is after building our project, we need to deliver it to somewhere, right? And as I mentioned, in hyper-casual genre, this means uploading it to a store. And most of the time, you need to create some custom scripts for that, because there, is, there isn't really a great solution for that yet. So for example, we have a custom bash script that runs on our servers and just uploads the IPA file or APK file to the stores. And you also need to set up some credentials for that so it can reach and log into the API and do that. Um, yeah, and also, as I mentioned, we can now test continually and find every bug in a fast way. And continuous delivery is also is a key part together with automated builds. It just makes things a lot smoother. Yeah, and testing, well, as I mentioned, we do some manual testing, right? So in, we almost never set up some un unit or functional tests, which are really common in, uh, common, which are really common in a, a normal software project. But in hypercasual, we just play and test. So having an automated build and deployment lets us uh, finding and scratching bugs in a, a fast pace, which is also super important. Well. Um, I think it's been more than two years since we started investing on our DevOps tools and mentality. So I think we can uh, give the others just some tips and tricks if we may. So first of all, you need to embrace the DevOps mentality and you need to know what it is actually. Because it's a philosophy, it's not, a, it's not only an impl implementation, but it's also a philosophy. So you can uh, convey this philosophy to the, all of the team so that now everyone has this kind of mentality, and that means we are going to be building better products. You need to automate everything that you can. This includes the builds, this includes the package publishing, this includes, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, stuff like uh, using art packages in your projects. I don't know, a lot of stuff you can come up with, but automating everything is the key. Because once you start automating things, it will just 
starts to build up, right? So once you automate one thing, it will always be automated. And over time, it will save you an enormous amount of time. And you need to provide tools to the team, because without some tools, those basically wouldn't be ex existing. So you need to provide them some uh, packages that they can easily use. You need to uh, make them easily automate their builds. Um, so there are things that you need to do in order to uh, help your team uh, and automate everything. And uh, as I mentioned, you need to convey the DevOps philosophy to the team. Basically, what we are doing in Longhorn is we, on a weekly basis, we are doing some show and tell sessions. And in those sessions, we always give some information, something new to the team. So this really helps us developing all the time. And yeah, little things pile up. So once you start automating something, it will just be helpful for the future. So for example, we have some package manager that you can easily download some packages. Uh, we have some uh, registry uh, server for our Unity custom packages. So these things matter. So small things matter, really. And how it helped us as Longhorn Games. So it really saved us a lot of time. So for Crowdolution, which is our latest hit, we had more than thousands of builds, which is basically impossible if you just manually build it. And Dream Restaurant, likewise, had more than 700 builds. And now we are ready to scale up. So if we go to a team of, let's say, 50, we will have this build in place, right? So we can just immediately uh, start building more and more projects because it's already there. And we are not only a game studio, but we are also a tech startup. So DevOps also helps with that. Because we have servers, we have automation in place, we can do whatever we want. We are not limited to the gaming genre. Yeah, so some examples uh, how we are utilizing the DevOps mentality. So we have a package manager where we can, without quitting Unity, we can just open that package manager window up and we can just click on install. And whatever we have, all the packages can be downloaded from this UI, which has been working great for us. And it's really helped us developing games faster because now you can open that up and you can check what, a, what kind of packages we have. And you can just, OK, we have a front stack mechanic. So I don't have to re-implement the front stack mechanic. I can just install it from right here, right from Unity. We have a package registry. So package registry is kind of different than the uh, Unity asset store packages. Because if you ever use the package manager, you know that it just connects to a server. Most, for the most part, it would be the Unity registry server. But we also have our own server. So now we have our packages versions, and we can download a previous version if we need to, which is also has been super helpful for us. And we would also recommend everyone to utilize the uh, custom package registry servers. And another example is uh, we have a level editor which, is which, is, which has been building and deployed and tested continuously thanks to our uh, automated servers. So we can constantly improve our level editor. And now we can build levels faster. This is something we have implemented specifically for runner genres. And um, it helps a lot. Helps a lot. Yeah, so this is our experience with DevOps so far. Um, we really recommend everyone to get in familiar with DevOps mentality and just using automation more, saving more time, using packages. Whatever you can gain time, uh, you should just try it and learn it. Thanks, everyone, for listening. OK, so if you have any questions, I can answer. Looks like no questions. 
I was wondering what is your uh, development cycles in timeline, like in how many weeks does it take for you to develop a single game from start to finish? Well, that really depends on the game, but for the most part it takes around two to three weeks because we tend to build high quality games. Uh, we don't really uh, have to build super fast prototypes. We believe our games should be high quality and this is how we define it. But thanks to, our, thanks to these methodologies, we always know how much time we are going to need, and we can always optimize this planning. And if we hadn't all this automation in place, it would always take at least one week longer than what it takes now. So that's how I can answer. I have another question, by the way. I guess. Is it OK? Yeah. Uh, about testing. Uh, does it involve any testing up uh, in the store or just testing in for internal bugs or you know in gameplay? We, ha we have some testing in place for our, for example, for our level editor mm -hmm. uh, because that project is suitable for some automated testing. Because level, what level editor does is it just reads some data from some script tool object and generates the level based on that. So that means I can automate this kind of testing, right? Because there is some data, there are some functions, functions read the data and generate some level. So I can automate this. So, so this is automated. But this is not always the case for all the projects. For example, for a runner project, a new runner project, it's really hard to automate testing because it changes all the time. Environment changes, the movement changes, everything changes. So it's kind of chaotic. So it really depends on the game. But whenever we can, we always automate our testing as well. And also, Unity Cloud Build has built-in support for that, so that's great. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Osama. All right, thanks, everyone.